materials inside the beds, like straw. You know, all in there is no foam. All right. So they had the straw thing. So this is it. Okay. The, no, his bed was here, so we preserved it and got the bed. I will always bed. entered the ancient city of Lekki, that's the ancient town of Lekki, that's the gate there and we're heading towards the museum which is the Awolowo Museum. Okay, when you talk about Nigerian history, they are just key people that you always have to have in your head and they are people that we always want to celebrate and one of them is Chief Obafemi, late Chief Obafemi Awolowo. And recently his statue was just unveiled in Ikeja and this place is Ibejuleki. So we decided that okay, let's do more, let's like talk more, let's share more light on his story. Chief Obafemi Jeremiah Oyeni Awolowo died 30 years ago at the age of 78 and was born in Ogun State, Nigeria. He was a Nigerian nationalist, political leader, writer, and a principal participant in the country's struggle for independence alongside other national heroes. And that's why we're going to his museum. Let's see what it looks like because I heard that um, it has like a lot of things he used, his clothes, his um, different things, a lot of things, even his letters. And I heard it was like a prison home. Yeah, but let's go and check it out because I want to explore, so come with me. Ah, finally, we are at our museum and private beach. Yeah, private beach. It does have a private beach. Nice. So we're going to meet the tour guide. He will take us around and let us know everything we need to know. So we are here now and we have our tour guide here. So can we meet you? My name is Kola. Kola. All right, yes. my name is Foley. Okay. Cool. So let's go. So what's this place like? Yeah, this is Lekki Town. Though. The reason why it's called Lekki Town is because it's actually it's Lekki Town. And the palace of the Lekki is just there. Okay. It's just across that primary school. But right here is the tomb of the person who is, um, if you can see, Yes. Mr. Lecky, Portuguese slave trader. So he was buried here standing upright. Okay. And then, of course, he was a white guy into slave trade. That is why um, the whole area is called Lecky Town. Okay, so that's it's where named, the name came yeah, out from. It's named after him. He was buried standing upright. And then he died from malaria. This is Mr. Lecky's tomb. He used to sell slaves, palm oil, and salt. So he sells a, slaves. Yeah, like 400 years ago. Okay. Yeah. So, it's a historical place. <laughs> so, there's a lake somewhere there. Okay. Where they used to like get the salt, you know, it goes up. They used to, there's a process they used to get the salt. Okay. So, they put the salt, the slaves are palm oil on the ship and Send it goes it. all there. There's a point of no return somewhere there. Oh, cool. Yeah. We'll, but, get, to, we'll get to see there. Yeah, you would. All but, right. Um, because it was a former slave camp, the okay. federal government used as a federal government VIP prison. You know, it was a safe camp 400 years ago. Okay. But the federal government is um, a prison for VIPs, like political prisoners. People. So Awolo was brought here in the 60s. So it's been existing for like 400, for centuries, but Awolo was brought here like a few decades ago. Okay, a few decades ago. Yeah. But that's why it's called it's a 1962. Home. All right, 1962. This is the house of the man called Lekki. This is his house, exactly. Just this is his exact house. house. Okay. So it's renovated though. Okay, in the story we, um, we know the um, 1963 to 1966 where yeah. he was in prison in Calabar. Yeah. Okay, so, so it was here, 62 and, 62, then, and then moved Calabar. him to Calabar. Yeah, the okay. Thing. So this was like a home arrest. It's a VIP prison. So it's VIP like prison. Just okay. a big prison. There were prison wardens around and stuff. Okay. Yeah. 
our African leaders they took over after those people, obviously, right? And then these are pictures of um I don't know who was brought here for treason, but here was the front page of Tribune. All right. When he was brought here, you can clearly see it is our sent, sent to Lekki. Yeah, and talking about here. So when you hear Lekki, it is not Oriental or Admiralty Road. I get you. <laughs> Man called like yeah, the whole slave trade is the underground cell at the point of no return. Where once they go through, they can't come back. Really come back. Yeah. This is how the place was before. This beach front. Where we are exactly. This is exactly how it looks. Dilapidated and everything. Okay. Yeah. Do they the still place. process the salt now? Like do Nobody the salt? Knows that. There's no more slave trade. Okay. <laughs> this is the material inside. The beds, like straw, you know, olden days, no foam. All right. So they had the straw thing. So this is it. Okay. The, no, his bed was here, so we preserved it and got the bed, all over the bed. Okay. Okay, so we got it. Like so this, this was just a kind of game for boredom, no electricity. No, there was electricity in the world then, but they didn't have electricity here. Okay. Even till today, they still don't have electricity here. So this is what they used to keep themselves busy. Busy. This is just to show the kind of boats okay. they came because there were no roads, obviously. Because it came from my friend. From okay. okay, when you said kept them busy, who and who? Oh, when he was here, there were like 300 people here. With him, his wife was here, his okay. kids visited. He had, it was a big, it was like almost the president of the country, so there was big politicians. His supporters, yeah, so everyone the, came the, around. They came, the economy of this area boomed while he was here. Okay. Yeah, you know. That's his, his bathroom. And then his bath is outside. His kitchen building is. Okay, did you outside. modernize the bathroom? No, no, that's the old one. Exactly there how were it was. in the air those years, so it's not, it wasn't so old school. Wow. <laughs> so it's a normal bathroom. Okay. Yeah, and then you have his personal stuff here. Okay. Which is. This is glasses that we know him stuff. for. Yeah. Alright. Can we open and check? Mm -mm, no. We can't. It has to be okay. Yeah. Nice. In nineteen forty four, he went to the United Kingdom to study law at the University of London and was called to bar by the Honourable Society of the Inner Temple on 19 November 1946. In 1937, he married Hannah Idowu Dideolu and they had two sons and three daughters. Awolowo was the first individual in the modern era to be named leader of the Yorubas, Ashiwaju Awon Yoruba, or as well Ashiwaju Omoudua. He pioneered free primary education in Nigeria and also free health care. He built the Liberty Stadium in Ibadan, the first of its kind in Africa. He established the Western Nigerian Television, WNTV, the first television in Africa. He erected the first skyscraper in tropical Africa, the Coco House, still the tallest in Ibadan. His party was the first to move the motion for Nigeria's independence. In 1963, Chief Obafemi Awolowo was found guilty of conspiring to overthrow the government of Nigeria and sentenced to 10 years of imprisonment. However, in 1966, a coup d'etat led to the suspension of the Nigerian federal constitution and to his release in July 1966. How long did he stay here? A few months. Just a few months. Okay, before? Taken to Calabar prison. I love our law because he gives us free education. When I was primary school, 
we need to go to library to go and collect book freely. When we use for the period one time, they collect it back. They will give us another one and free it. So you benefited free health and education from our law. I I was born in Saple. I enjoyed free education. If other regional governors, original premiers did what he did at that time, Nigeria would have been a better place. And if he had allowed, if he had been allowed to rule this country, Nigeria would have been a better place than it is now. He was a legend, a sage, a sage par excellence. And the history of Nigeria will not be complete without Chief of Bafi Maolo. So we're done with the inside, but we'll be going outside to check out the no point of return, the underground and the beach as well. And we have a new person, a new tour guide that will be taking us through that. Your name sir? My name is Aziz. I want to take you to a point of no return. Alright, so let's go. Okay, this place is what? Just houses. Okay. It's a really big place. So what's this mantle for? This is entrance of the play, uh, point of no return. Okay. Entrance. But the girl fence by that time. Okay. But now it's collapsed. Okay. So before, before. I go in between here? Yeah? Yes, between here. Yeah. Okay. This is middle. Okay. It's different. Okay. But now it's collapsed. Collapse. Okay. See the brick. Okay. So you come you you come in through that gate. The gate. Gate. Yes. And then when you enter this place, this place yes. it's like an underground. It's an underground. So that place is still very deep. Yes. So, but it's blocked now. It's, it's blocked now. So before, when they come in here, they'll go inside yeah, here, go and inside. it would link them to Portugal. If white man want to sell the slave, the ship they go deal down down inside the sea. Okay. But they go carry fly boat. The, 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 the bank. The boundary of this place. They will put ladder inside. Okay. All slave trade, they will climb the, the ladder, come out. All the old slaves. Uh, yes. They, flee, they, they will enter the flyboat. Okay. Go and put them, them in the, the main, main ship. ship. Okay, he will keep them here for, yes. for some time. Yes. Then he would, when it's time for them to they move, move, they will, they will come out, inside. they'll pull ladder, and all of them will come, come outside. Out. It's more like a prison. prison yes. Okay, so that they cannot escape. escape. But immediately they pass through. The man to that's the fence, yeah. they cannot go back to yeah, the yeah. city again. Yeah, yeah. They will come inside the they prison. Inside. When it's time for them to come out to be moved to Portugal, they will put a ladder and they would yeah, yeah. move to the yeah. ship. Thank you. about the unveiling of the statue of Awolowa, I had a picture in my head. But getting here, it's so different. One thing I love about this statue is that it looks so real. Everyone passing this place would definitely know that there is something here and not just something but a beautiful artwork. And the good thing is that Awolowa has a smile on his face. And that caught my attention. It looks so real. And the fact that he's so comfortably sitting down and looking at everyone, the hustle and the bustle in the city of Lagos. What do you think about Wolowo? Ah, he's one of Nigeria's nationalists that cannot be forgotten in the history of Nigeria that helped Nigeria to get his independence. So he's somebody that is remarkable, that's supposed not to be forgotten for life. During his time, there were a lot of abundance in, and it was a good government then. then. Then it was actually the time you can say you can use your 500 Naira. Your 500 Naira 
to have a bungalow house and still pay your school fees, as in your children's school fees, and you'll be very, very okay with it compared to the 500 naira of now. Our law to me is a father, he's a philanthropist, he's a politician, he has a lot of bagarre in country, he's a political father, he's a motivator, he's one of us give the free education in Nigeria. So, a lot about our law. He was very, very sound. Politically, socially, in every consideration, Awo represented excellence. Well, I understand there's a controversy about the statue that uh, his followers or admirers say they prefer him standing. But it's not as it's symbolic. The statue is symbolic. It doesn't matter whether he's lying down or sleeping or standing. It's not important. It, the important is that he's been remembered as somebody who contributed to the development of this country and they want to immortalize him by putting his statue here. It doesn't matter that uh, most of his uh, statues are where he's standing and raising his hand. It's not important. Okay, what do you think about the statue? Yeah, it's, it's, it's okay and to me, it brings that Nigeria can still be great again. It's very fine, very nice, and I love it. Now, the statue is there for the tourism attractions. It's there for our youth. So, you know, people are not, uh, they've not seen our love for the, you know, for real life. But the statue is there, everybody can just glance through at it. After rain comes sunshine, after darkness comes the glorious dawn. There is no sorrow without its alloy of joy. There is no joy without its admixture of sorrow. Behind the ugly, terrible mask of misfortune lies the beautiful, soothing countenance of prosperity. So, tear the mask. A quote from Chief Obafemi Awolowo. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Butter. Box.